terms of when, uh, in terms of acquiring equipment and upgrading their equipment. And when you upgrade or acquire, how do you go about your warranties and making sure that they are intact? And um, there is no better person in this industry right now than Mr. Biola, our guest. But before I get ahead of myself, let me quickly do a short introduction of the organization that is behind this whole thing that we are doing today. Um, it's called the Church Media X. Church Media X is the one powering the Church Media Professionals Network. So what is Church Media X? It's an interdenominational community of church media experts and interns designed to resource us for our services in the tech, media, and communications departments of the kingdom of God. So this includes young talents, entrepreneurs, professionals, and creatives in the media industry. So we inspire excellence, we sharpen your expertise, and broaden your experiences. Now, the reason we started this was one day I had a challenge in my space here. I work in House on the Rock. Many of you know about it. And I was thinking, why can't I just go somewhere and ask questions and receive answers? And it dawned on me that if I can't find that solution, why don't we create the solution? So one of the days I was thinking about it, I met my brother, Adura Miga, and both of us founded Church Media X together. And that's what we currently have and currently run. It's it's like uh, somebody was talking to me recently and said, it's a Naira land of church media. And I said, exactly. That was what was in my head. Naira land of church media. So you go there, you get information, you get help, you get resources. And today, I was talking to Mr. Biola sometime back, maybe a month ago. He said to me, ah, uh, he will call me Bishop. I heard that you are doing something and you have not told me about it. You know, it was interesting. From the first day I penned down Church Media X, Mr. Biola's name was on the list. But I had not found the time to just um, breeze um, him into the purpose and vision. But... Fortunately, somebody mentioned it to him and he asked me. And I said, sir, it's the right time to put you on. Okay, if you're just joining, please drop a comment. Drop a comment where are you joining us from and please mute your mic. Okay, without further ado, having introduced the community, we currently are at um, 1, 000, about 1,500 people in the community. That's a big thing. And God is helping us to uh, keep the community sane. You know how it can be managing what happened in Nigeria. So but it has been staying and it has been growing. So without further ado, let me quickly introduce our guest. Ross. Okay, Amin, please mute all mics. Thank you. No distractions. Okay. Admin, please mute all mics. Mute all mics. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, without further ado, let me quickly introduce our guests. You would not believe some of the things you are going to hear now. He's, um, he's a high-achieving management professional with over 10 years' experience leading teams, driving sales across West Africa. He's been successful at building strong professional networks across Nigeria, West Africa, UK, US, and Europe. This man has traveled far and wide. He has hands-on experience in broadcast system designs, project planning, and implementation. He's leading a technology-driven company to profitably, uh, profitably grow its business in Nigeria and West Africa. Now, he has a postgraduate diploma in business management last year and a first degree in, guess what, biochemistry. <laughs> he will tell us how he moved from biochemistry into what he's doing right now. A couple of uh, professional certifications, including being, no, you need to do a drum roll for me now, being the first new tech certified TriCaster operator in Nigeria. Yes, I allowed that silence so that you can let it sink in. The wow. first. Yes. Wow. The first. 
So he's a dedicated member of the media team in Faith Tabernacle, Canaan Land. He's a fantastic camera operator and he's a continuous learner. Let me tell you, he trained us here at House on the Rock on the operations of the TriCaster and it was an excellent, excellent session. Without further ado, I bring to you tonight my bishop. You will say he's not a bishop, but he's my bishop. Bishop Ogundeji Abiola Aderoju. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Mr. Abiola, good Thank to you. have you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, um it's it's an awesome pleasure to be here. Um I'm particularly not I'm better off behind the camera. I'm particularly not used to being in front and um, I know. I well, know. that's why we put this together. All of you behind the camera come <laughs> to the front. <laughs> well, it's a it's a it's an opportunity and I'm really grateful. I I I thank God for for you guys for your life. I like what you're doing. It's quite impressive. This is the kind Thank of thing that actually helps us grow. The fact that we can all come together and learn together. Nobody's an iota yes. and a tomb of perfection. We all learn. We're all, yes. all, we're all products in progress. So iron will always sharpen it. Iron will also get to wherever I want it. And I want to trust God that um, even tonight, it's not like I'm really coming to teach you anything. You guys are particularly, everybody here is, I've, I've seen names and I've even been seeing names of my guys all around here. So, but all the same, um, we're just sharing ideas and then we'll trust that God will take us forward and make us learn one or two new things. All right, so if sir. You, if you don't mind, I would uh, want to start off and share my screen. Uh, Mr. Biola, one okay, moment, sir. All right, sir. You studied, bio, you studied biochemistry. Yes, I did. <laughs> so how did you cross over? How did you cross over? Let's start with that. Okay, so how do I say it? Um, whilst I was whilst I was in Ife, I was I was a I was a laboratory rat. I was crazy about biochemistry. But um wow. I have a boss that wait that it kind of waited for me at the gates of <laughs> OAU. As I was stepping out, he just grabbed me. I guess I'm sure you know who I'm talking about, Dr. Michael Obey. Yeah, so I they call him they, they call him Doc because now listen to this. He has a PhD in pharmacy. What and after, after a PhD in pharmacy, he moved into media. So what has my first degree got to do in comparison with his? So that's my story, and um, it's been it's been wonderful ever since. About wow. 23 years running now. And um, mm -hmm. it's been a good story. Wow. wow. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that story with us, sir. Okay, you have the floor, sir. Let's All get right, into Thank the you very much. Yeah. Um, I just want to share my screen now. And um... I just need one person to confirm that you can see my screen. Yes, we can. We can see your screen, sir. All right, fantastic. Yes, you can see your screen. So, um, yes, maximizing your church tech media investments, warranties, maintenance, long term planning. Um, when um, Bishop came to me with this topic, I was particularly, I was personally thinking that, okay. He, he actually gave me. Yeah, look, whoa. He actually gave me a list of things to talk about, and topic. And when he gave it to me, I was like, "Bro, you've done the job already. Now, what are you asking me to come here to do?" The topics actually explains them itself. So, um, I believe it's something that will all um, flow. It. It's not something you are not used to. It's just reminding you of some balls we drop here and there. And helping us to go forward. So, I won't say much on this. I've been introduced, everything here has been talked about, except the fact that, okay, I've written here that, um, yes, I'm the first new tech certified operator in Nigeria. But I have an ogre 
which I believe all of you know. And his name is David Ayeni. He's also a Nigerian. He got certified before me, but he got certified in the UK as a UK citizen. Okay. So that's where he lost that position to me. I'm still the first Nigerian to be certified. Thank you. God. <laughs> um, so we say, um, we're talking about tech investments. I started my, my slide there by having a touch through about what an investment is. So we say, what's an investment? An investment in simple term means using money to try to make a profit, produce an income, or deliver value. And at every point in time, I, I feel that this few thoughts need to be need to sink in before we start so that it helps us to understand exactly what it is we want to talk about here. Investment. Church tech media is an investment because what do we do with the media? We help it's used, it's used to propagate the gospel. Yeah. And that means you are investing funds, we're investing resources, we're investing talent and knowledge to produce, to propagate the gospel, to win souls. So the end product of whatever we do in church is winning souls. If we don't win souls into the kingdom, then that is not what we are. We are, we are still far behind what exactly we want to do. So mm. making it, looking at the literal uh, um, explanation that use an investment to bring in stuff, then church tech investments actually allows us to use the acquisition of this equipment that we buy to help propagate the gospel. That's a product that we push out, and then the end product of what we gain in is souls into the kingdom of God. Hmm. If you have money and you put it in a bank, that is not investment. Hmm. Even if you get interest on it little by little, it's not investment. But if you invest that money in a bond or in a, in a stock, or you use to buy a product that you sell and then bring back more profits, that is where it becomes an investment. And that's why church tech is an investment because it is used to propagate the gospel and to bring in souls into the kingdom. That's the end point. We must not forget the fact that even though we are tech, we are, we are, we are technologists, we are people that we are IT people, we are people of, of intellect and all of that, we are all fashioned towards one particular goal. And that is and the particular goal is to propagate the gospel and expand the church of God in Nigeria or in wherever we are. Mm. I hope you can still hear me. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Fantastic okay. point. Mate. All right, sir. So that being told, we now say why is church tech acquisition and investment? So it's very easy to, it's very easy because we use church acquisition is an investment because it carries a cost. It is money that we invest in buying this thing. Yeah. Even after you now, you saw after the very year. Sorry. Hello. Am I still communicating, sir? Yeah. Can you still hear me, please? Can somebody respond? Yes, uh, yes, we can. we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, we can hear you, sir. Yes. So we say it carries a cost. Yes, yes. We can hear you. We can hear you, sir. Yes, yes. It carries a cost. It demands effort. It requires talent, and all of these things resonate to money. I'm sure you do. I, I'm sure you know that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Very. Cost, cost is cash. Efforts you put into a thing can bring you money. Your talent is what a lot of people sell to make money. You can tell that for everybody that does events, for instance, it is your talent that you use to go and do whatever it is that you're doing out there. Either to create a music video, create a, an, um, a movie, cover an event, create a content that turns around to become a turn around to make money for you. So that is uh investment that comes in with money. It also means that it produces results which expected to give uh, to be greater in value than its cost. 
So it is not an investment if the effort you put in is the same thing that comes out with it. Yeah. It is not an investment if you if you if you put in a thousand dollars into a venture and at the end of the day you are making nine hundred and fifty dollars. Hmm. That is not an investment. So you must have that mentality that church media, as much as we can, we cannot quantify money with souls, but with the amount of um, results that we bring in is now indirectly the value of the interest or the or the profit that is coming in via the the uh, input we have put into it. So that is why we must always understand that it is an investment. And also, the quality of the input also determines the magnitude of its output. And this is very simple. If you if you have ever held your remote and you just you don't have a particular a particular um channel or station you want to watch, but you kept scrolling down your your, your station, your your channel lists one after the other. Where are you likely to stop scrolling? Wherever you have clear visual visuals. So that helps to also say that the quality of the input we put into our media production no, will determine the magnitude of the output that we get. A lot, a lot of people today will watch selling. I'm gonna I'm gonna refrain myself from calling names. I will watch certain, certain stations because of the clarity of visuals and sound. But you should not expect much if the clarity of the visual and sound is poor. That is already at the beginning affecting the quality of viewership that you have. And the quality of viewership that you get will determine how many people get to understand the message you are passing out. Sorry, sir. Please give me a There is a lot your mic. Put your mic. Put your mic. We're back in the European qualifiers in good today here in Brussels. Belgium need to beat out of our shop to ensure they maintain their recent record. Let's, let's go. I'm not sure the See. person is in this meeting. Can we take the person out? Because I don't just give me a moment. Um, hello, sir. Please, can you make me the host? Yes, make yes, a drum yes. the host back. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, please. You are now the host. Please make a drum in the host. Okay, okay, I'll do that. Give me a second, please. Yeah. Oh. Please, the host should mute this person. Yeah, we are working on that. So. Um, just click on my yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. I've just done that. I've just done that now. Okay. Oh, not me. Um, we secure, secure studio. Please. That's the person making the, back the, noise. Out of the noise. That's the person making the noise. You have just handed power to him. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, no. I think okay. I try, to, try to retake it back. You should be able to retake it. Okay, hold on. Um... So who is this person I made the host? Who is Secure Studio? That's the person making the noise. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so how do I do this? Now you go, go to um, our host. Reclaim host around the participant area. You will see reclaim host. I do tell him. I don't agree with me. I'm allowed. 
Okay, yes, okay, um, okay. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you, sir. So you can make me the host, Adura Migba. Is he making you the host now? Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, Mr. Gosling, please uh, make me the host. Make a drum in the host. All right, so I can go on, right? Yes, sir. So sorry for the... It's fine, it's fine. Um, Thank you so much, sir. It's part of it. So I'm not going to waste much time on this anymore. <laughs> at least I think I have... Um, I've been able... I've, so we already understand that we should we should perceive um, our, our equipment, our setup as an investment that is meant to bring in value to bring in multitudes to the kingdom of God and also understand that the quality of our input will determine the output we get from it. So Absolutely. that's... Absolutely. So um, before we go on, I would like us to understand three vital points and um, we need to put this in mind. Not just, it's not something we are not, we are not used to, but we need to understand that we cannot as church media people completely take the spirituality out of, uh, aspect of it away. So the mm. first the first thing is that every member of the church group is a minister of the gospel and must us and we must see ourselves at our duty posts, whether voluntary or paid duty, as co-ministers with the set man or with the man of God. I'm not going to read the scriptures, but of course we all know um Mark 16, 15, you know, Mark 13, 10, and Book of Acts 1, 8. It clearly mm -hmm. states all of this. Look at yes, that. Sir. That we should understand the fact that it's we've been, we've been given that, that task by Christ, that we should go to the world and propagate the, and preach the gospel. And how does one person, one me, or one you, begin to go from, okay, let me start from Ghana, and from Ghana, I want to go to Cote d'Ivoire, from Cote d'Ivoire to Kenya, to Kenya, to Tanzania. It's not possible. But with the with the skills we have, with the equipment we have on ground, we can reach the world. It's far reaching at the top of one button. We can tell how many people are, co are, are connected to this call right now from several other places. So let's understand that the job of the man of God is not done alone by him. He speaks to the microphone. The microphone amplifies whatever it is to everybody in the in the congregation at the same right. time we take the visuals and amplify it to the world and hmm. the quality of what we amplify to the world determines the result we get back on it so we must always have that in mind secondly we must always see we must never trivialize what we do and always understand that we must put in the best of our spirituality and professionalism into play I've seen places where people would come to church, mount their duty post in church, and just be nonchalant and just do it. At least I'm just doing it for them. I'm helping them. And we, while, while they go out for, for, for paid jobs that they have to do, we're putting the best into it. So mm. if, if the same God that allows you to get those jobs outside, you cannot put in your best into creating the best for his kingdom, then we are getting it wrong. We must understand sure. that as church media people, if you make one error outside, it's an outcome of your of your sowing that you put in, in the church. Hmm. See, see as thou a man diligent in his business, it will walk, it will stand before queens and not before main men. That's what the Bible says, Proverbs 22, 29. And that is what I'm saying here, that we must understand that while we are at our duty post, we must take everything as professional as possible and at the same time, knowing that it is not our power or our might, so our spirituality also must come into play. The mix of these two is what brings out the best of whatever it is that we put into it. That's hmm. the second part. The third part hmm. is that we must also be cautious to know that we serve a rewarder God. We don't serve a God that takes from you and never gives back. 
God True. is a God that when you give to him, he will give back to you. So we must mm. have that consciousness behind ourselves that when we are doing, if you are doing something for a reward, you, it, it's, it determines how best you put your actions into it, how best you put yourself into it, how selfless you go into getting things done. And that is where, mm. that's what's also one thing we must understand. These three hmm. things are things we've heard before, but I'm telling you that if we put it into practice, it helps the way we take actions while we are working at our duty post in our churches. And at the same time, it gives us, it brings out the best in our ability for whatever we want to do and helps us as well to determine, and that will help to determine the outcome that we get collectively, collectively both as individual and as a team as well. So this is just something we've heard before, a reminder. As we go mm -hmm. along, we must know that in all that we're doing and all that we're talking about today, we're not just going about the professionalism part of it. We must understand that nothing happens except God allows it and was put that in place. So the first part that we'll briefly touch is, is budget-friendly tech solutions for small churches. So and um, this is something that we mostly get wrong. Fantastic. Because, a lot of time. Yeah. A, a, a lot of time we mostly get this wrong. Because um when churches start, both big and small, everybody just know that ah church A has done this and they have done that. Let's gather money, let's go and buy our own so that we can start doing like they are doing. But it's not always that. There are things that we should look at, there are things we should put into consideration before we even begin to build up our our, our media department. Mm. Because it is not apples for apples. It is not every solution that will work for church A that is going to work for mm. church B. So going out to say what equipment are they using is a very wrong statement to make. The right thing to do is first, we must identify our mm. needs. So mm. there, are, there, are, there, are, there, are, there are churches that, okay, they have their needs and everybody's needs is peculiar to their environment, to their ministry and to their churches. Let me tell you of a truth. As a tech media person, as a choir or chorister in a church or any other uh, service group, whatever it is you are doing must be tailored along the thinking, understanding of the sex man. If you do not mm. carry his mindset along in what you are doing, you are not going to move anywhere. Mm. Because he has to suit his purpose. True. So even where you see that there are, there are, there are things that you want to implement or you want to bring into the into the church that he doesn't understand, you have to find a way to make him understand. And that is why the number one thing to do is to identify our needs. What does do we need? There are churches that are all they just want to do for a start is let the congregation hear you well, let everybody carry the CD, let's sell good CD at the end of the service you understand mm. that mm. is it somebody will be like no that's not just all i want there are people in church but there are people that want to be part of the church that are not here let's yes. them be part of the church life mm. that's now the, that is all of these things are defining the kind of need that you have as an as an individual as an organization as a church or as a, as a church family or as a mm. department so your need, you need to itemize your need. That's your media need, what it is you need. And that will now help you determine. That's the first step in determining the solutions you are going for. The second thing mm -hmm. is to analyze your budget. Yes. Not everybody has a big budget. True. And there are solutions for every budget. Mm -hmm. So when, when you come to me and say, yes, eh, I want to set up um, I want to set up a media department. I want to set up a media department. Uh, I want you to let me set up something that is not too expensive. The first question I'll ask you is, what is your budget? If you cannot tell me what your budget is, then you have to go back. If you tell me you don't have a budget, that's not true. People like mm. that will make you work two, three, four times. Because if you tell me you don't have a budget, and they give you an high-end solution, you come back to me and say, oh, Abba, it's too expensive now. Hmm. And if, I, if I look at you and I say, okay, you don't have a budget, I give you a way lower solution. And you've been somewhere before and you'll be like, so that guy knows there's a better solution and he's giving me that one. 
True, so true. We, it is important, it is paramount yeah. that we must work with a budget. Nobody mm. goes out, the Bible says nobody goes out without, goes to war without counting what he's going to do and the spoils and the spoils of the war. So you must have in mind a budget that you want to work with. That will determine what will help you with, with what will help you with, with what you think that you're, you're trying to do. Yes. Thirdly, you must determine your reach. The things, the, 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 the audience you want to reach, you have to determine them. So are you just interested in a local setting, maybe just the church environment alone, or probably just the geographical area you are alone? That will determine the kind of things you do. It will help in fashioning out the kind of things you do. Or you want to be far-reaching. Maybe I'm just a Nigerian church, and I'm going to stick my production to just Nigeria alone. It determines how you fashion out your production. Or you want to be far-reaching all over the world. That will determine how you also get to do your production and the kind of equipment you have to buy. Hmm. Right? So all of these things will help for you to understand that, okay, this is where we are now. You have you understand your need already. I know what your budget is. And now in terms of your reach, yes, I want to reach out to the whole world, but I don't have an equipment that can do that because of my budget. Then you now decide that, okay, let's do it this way. We'll do our production live. Would, would would push live to the con to, to the congregation at, at at first. After service, we do a quick edit and upload for others to see. That hmm. is the solution based on a particular kind of budget. Because if you want to be seen live as a production is on, then you must be sure that you have good cameras. You have cameras that can do instant color corrections and all of those things to give you a far yeah. reaching look out there. I must start thinking of streaming devices encoding and decoding to begin to be able to go live. Hmm. So all of these things are quite important to help into what we'll be doing. Hmm. Next is to project into the future. Some hmm. people just go to buy equipment that will run into obsolescence in another three, three, six months. So you must, you must look into your future, identify your growth pattern. Or hmm. you take a growth pattern for yourself. That also will determine how you can decide your budget-friendly equipment. So if if you if you see yourself that okay, in another it, this church currently is um is a church of one thousand people, but I see that in another two three years we are going to grow to twenty thousand people. Then you must start fashioning out the way you buy your equipment from that very first day that you're 1,000 and start behaving like a 20,000 church. Hmm. Because there is something hmm. called penny wise and pound foolish. There are equipments that are, some people will rush to go and buy because they are cheap. Understandably, they are cheap and in the initial concept of time, it will work for you. But by the time your growth starts and expansion starts, and, you, and the Lord blesses you and your growth is very, very vast and fast. You'll find mm. out that that cheap, in quotes, equipment that you got would no longer now be able to satisfy you or serve you when you expand. Mm. So most often than not, they end up putting that particular one aside and then putting money together again to buy again. Meanwhile, there are equipments that grow with time, but you really exactly do not have to put the initial equipment away. An example of it is a TriCaster. It grows with time. If you get a mm -hmm. TriCaster today, and at the end of the day, there are updates. Because every time, all of the manufacturers are coming up with updates and upgrades. The updates on the TriCaster, most of the time, is, 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 is software. When something new comes up, or they, or they get a new bug, a new fix, or a new technology to add to the unit, they just send you an email, you go online, download it, and then you've upgraded that product. Mm. But for some other equipments, for instance, for some other equipment that are probably not expandable or that are not future-proof, you, you, you'll be stuck to that particular uh, cabin that you have, and you won't have a choice. You'll be forced to put money together again to buy something else. That's why there is this um, Indian... In Indian, is it, whether it's a proverb or a saying that my bosses will tell me that if you do something right, you cry once. 
But if you don't do it right, you cry many times because at every point in time, when you cry, you spend. When you spend money, you cry. That's so mm. that guy is spending of money. So that means that's the marble, sir. What the marble? So that's crying many times when you will keep putting in money over and over again for something you could have solved at once and will carry over a length of time. True. True. Let's move. Let's move again. Then the next thing is to uh, channel the pattern of broadcast. That's also important because the way you will do your broadcast in House on the Rock is not the way we will do our broadcast in, in Living Faith Church, for instance. Hmm. House on the Rock, your announcement is newscasting. Yes. So it makes sense for you to have a green screen studio. It makes sense for you to, for you to do a rehearsal on Saturday of the news. It makes sense for you to make, make it the set man understand that so the news must be ready later six o'clock on Saturday for us to rehearse and prepare. Mm. You understand? Yes, sir. Unlike, unlike other churches that announcements is announcement time, they bring it out, they type it out, they read it to you. So for those that will do newscasting, you will put in a lot more efforts and in probably have to use certain more equipment than somebody that will just come out and read it out alone. True. So mm. all of those things, the timing how how you what you do before you media begin to, you begin to set up your media departments and determine the kind of equipment you want to use right now the next thing is preparing your team so you want to you, you also want to make sure that you are prepared the right team most more often than not when you, when a new church a small church is starting up they don't get the right team at the beginning of the setup or the start up. And the reason is because in quotes, we call it small church. So they are just beginning to, they are just starting. So at that point, it is important to outsource team members. Hmm. It, could, it could be blessed to get people that would come in and do and do it uh voluntarily. If you have to pay for it, pay for it. But the beauty and the right pattern to do is that even if you get somebody that is a paid employee, you must not allow him go unless he empties himself. So it's not just coming on Sunday to get at the equipment and roll his game and then go away like a superhero. No. Whatever it is that he has, it must impact your team members. Hmm. So you must prepare your team. There must be continuous training. There must be sensitization. They must mm. understand the dream, the target, what you want to do. Mm. And then by the time you see the skill acquisition and all of that, what they have, that also helps to see, okay, these are the kind of things we want to get. Next is um, present your plan to God in prayer. Of course, there is nothing you can do. And there is nothing you have to do. Like I said earlier, you must not see these things as a tech, tech, tech thing in the world. Huh. There is nothing you do if you don't have the hand of God in it to fill. Right. Um, that is why you see in most places we'll have a division before the service, we'll have a division after the service. Before the service, we'll say, God, thank you for your help last week. We are going again this week. Help us have a good production. And then when huh. we come back after the production, we'll come back to you to say thank you because you've helped us have a good production today. It is right. it is it is it is important. Because there is nothing we can do in the energy of the flesh. Whatever we can, whatever we have to do, we must always put God first in our plan. Whoever puts God first will always come first in everything he does. True, true. Then, sir. Of, then of course, we should decide our goals. We know what we want to do. We must put it down. We must be plain. We could have on the board, maybe in the studio, in the media room, in the general office, departmental goal. Let everybody see it. Every time read it sink into it they say faith mm. coming by hearing and hearing the word of god this goal will also come by reading as you see it each time it begins to be a part of you you begin to understand what it is like and then you walk around how you're going to have it how you're going to have it done so next is to anticipate your risk and consider your risk tolerance so mm. in risk anticipation there is nothing you do that does not have any form of risk in it and we must always know that the risk will come out. So in anticipating the risk that will come out and risk tolerance and management, we must look at what, what the things we want to get are 
risk anticipation, part of risk anticipation is you determine that, okay, oh, for these equipment, we must decide to have our, our line of power separately. We want to get a UPS, we want to get, we want to get inverter. Those are risk hmm. management decisions that you will make. All of these things will also help you to choose right. You cannot buy an equipment of um of of a, a 5 kVA equipment or you're putting an inverter of 2.5 kVA. It doesn't make sense. So all mm. of these things we must put together, calculate our risk, check out the power ratings, see, make sure that our power is well um ethered, and all of these little things will help us, and then we can get 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 on with within the right um solution. And then lastly of this part is to put in our SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. this is, SWOT analysis does not have to do with the business or the, with the circular world alone. Of course, we know what SWOT, SWOT is. That's our um, strengths, strength, weaknesses, weak. opportunities. Oh. And so all okay. we must put, we must put our SWOT analysis into play in every decision we make. Mm. This is a model that has always worked. It helps right. you to avert problems and it helps you to make things work faster. Hmm. So, so with all of this, you can now begin to decide. We have a budget, and then always go through. And then one other something I didn't put into part is that always make sure that we don't, for small churches especially, always make sure you consult. Don't just go to buy equipment because church B has this kind of equipment. Put all of this into play, and if you still have gray areas, consult those that are knowledgeable in these areas that are all around you and they can mm. always help out and you can have the right, you can make the right decision for your production equipment. Right, right, right. So um, next I'll be talking about um, the future of church technology trends and innovation. Stay abreast of emerging technology. You, you will all agree with me that technology from the day you have known it has not been the same. Hmm. If True. I will tell you, I grew up knowing Betamax. And very fast, Betamax was like bin. VHS came in. We started using hmm. we started using CDs, flash. Now we're using chips. Hmm. Right? We, 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 we started uh, res, um, standard evolution from, from AV, green, uh, yellow, 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 red, and white cable. Remember? That's what yes. Pure analog, or oh. at, at best at that time is the composite, the green, mm. blue, and red cables to give you one video. That's mm. a better, better analog video as at then. But with yes. time HD came in, then we start seeing uh, ultra HD, 4K, 6K, and all of that. But if you mm. sit in the co in your comfort zone, and because you are having a very fantastic looking HD, you feel you are there. By the time you wake up. Technology has left you. By the time you grow to the level of, by the time your church grows to a level that you want to now start going, um, going online, probably you want to go to DSTV or your product you want to send to Netflix or Amazon Prime and all of that, they'll tell you you cannot work with us. All of these hmm. platforms have their recommendations. Yes. For instance, most importantly, in Netflix now, if you want to bring any product into Netflix, they're going to ask you. For a protocol that Davizu Resolve would always is only Davizu Resolve can do. Oh. Requirements. Amazon has a requirement. DSTV has is. They will love that. And you cannot sit back. Technology is growing, but because you look good to yourself and to your audience, you don't want to grow with it. You'll be left behind. So keeping your team updated on the continuous evolution in the broadcast world is very important. And this must be done from time to time. Every time you need to do departmental meeting, it should not always be that, okay, camera two, you're taking the wrong shots when a uh, pastor is talking, a uh, roving camera, you're showing legs of people instead of, why are you showing that girl? Is she your girlfriend? Not, that's not the only thing we should do. We should hmm. also sit together and learn and unlearn. If there are things that are changing in the world, let it be known. If you know now that you have started with SD, SDI cable is a fantastic solution that's been around for a very long time. But guess what? SDI is, is gone as far as I'm concerned. NDI mm -hmm. is taking over. 
Mm -hmm. SDI is serial digital interface. NDI is network device interface. And mm -hmm. what SDI does is that SDI take video and sound together. Mm -hmm. HDMI will take video, sound, and power. Yes. But NDI will take your sound and video and take data. With mm -hmm. NDI, NDI is a, all the other protocols are unidirectional protocol. NDI is bidirectional protocol. Hmm. NDI allows you to re be far reaching into certain areas. All of these things will not drop on your lap. You have to make efforts to know it and to hmm. make sure that the team also knows all of this trending, trending uh, evolution <laughs> in the industry. You must also, okay. also cultivate the habit of reading wide. As individuals, we must cultivate the habit of reading wide. We must read mm -hmm. out all of these things on your own. You don't have to be compelled to do it. It helps you grow. And mm -hmm. there are enormous materials out there that you don't have to pay a dime for. Mm -hmm. Google things, you'll see materials dropping, dropping on, your, on, your, on, on, on your desktop. Go on YouTube, there are enormous materials there that will help you to move your 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 production to the next level. And the top right. point I'm putting out here is that taking time out to study what others do, but you must always understand that it is what others do that you feel, if you know that is a church or a production team that are doing things that you really like, go hmm. there, pay them a visit. It is not pride. Hmm. It is not, and it is not, it is not prognosing. If you have hmm. to write a letter to them, because we are all we are all we are all churches, we are all um children of God, which will help each other grow. You can send hmm. a letter to such place and say, I we want to come and have a tour of your facility, we want to see how you do things so that we can incorporate it in our place. They will not say no, they will be happy to share with you. True, very true. You will get there, you will learn what they are doing, you compare to what you are doing. And we must always understand that when we go there is not to go and do copycats. Yes. Because it is not that is just that's why I add here that mm. it is that that, is, that you must understand that and be careful that there is not one single rule or route to success. Right. What they do, there might be a reason for why they are doing it. You might not need such solutions, so you don't have to take it. But you have learned that. And whatever it is that you learned will always be useful for you later in life. But you'll also mm. learn how to do things better. Mm. So don't Let's not let's push ourselves out of our comfort zone and see what others are doing, and then we can now come together and have a team talk, review it, read wide about it, and see what how that can go, how we can catch up with the technology. And that mm. is that's one thing that would help um help us grow in technology. It is not every time that growth in technology means buying more equipment. No. A lot of churches are busy buying things they never use. I can bet that a lot of people that bought equipment that they are barely scratching 40% um, um, usage of it. No hmm. maximization. But if you hmm. understand what these equipments can do, you can maximize it. And that, that can also help you to be innovative, to bring in things that would help the church media grow. And nobody hmm. sees a good thing and hates it. By the time your pastors or your your, your head of department sees that you are coming out with with uh, uh, with innovations that are helping the department grow. It will be acknowledged, and you will be better. We will, will all be better for it. Yeah, like I said, these are not things we are not used to. It's just reminding ourselves of what to do next. Okay, so okay. next, I'm talking about navigating the upgrade process. Okay, sir. Give us a give us a moment, sir. Just one moment. I want everyone that has just joined. I think the last time we said this, we were at uh, maybe fifteen people. If you just joined, drop your location and your church. So let's say uh, you're joining from House on the Rock. Put House on the Rock, Lekki, Lagos. Let's know where you're joining us from. And if you have been learning something since you joined, drop a five. Give us a five. Let me see a five in the comments. Thank you so much, sir. I know you are hey, hey, fantastic. RCCG Kubwa. <laughs> Mr. Adidawala, good to have you, sir. Okay, fantastic. I see we are learning. We are learning. I need more people to drop a five. We need to encourage our 
super guest speaker tonight. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, Mr. Biola. All right. Um, there's something you said. I wanted you to buttress that point. You said something about consulting because most times when churches start, they don't even know that the media requires the media department requires consulting. Then those that do consulting, they talk to the wrong people. Anybody they see carrying a camera, they assume that person knows about media. So I want you to help us. How do we identify the right people to even talk to in the first place? We have a lot of churches on the platform on our, um, in our community. How do we identify the right people to talk to in terms of consultancy for media in church Thank you very much. Okay, so um, that's a very salient point. Okay. Um, uh, the Bible says, by their fruits we shall know them. Hmm. We are in the broadcast world and um, we we know those that are getting it right, so to speak. Hmm. So in, in terms of getting the right consultant to speak with, it is not everybody on the winning team that played the football so True. if if you have um if you have a team that won the world cup for instance mm. that we one part one member of that team that did not kick the ball once but True. when they're getting the medals they all get the medals mm. so it is imperative for us to one seek out those that we see that are doing it right then mm. reach out to those that we see that are doing it right and mm. ask for point men amongst them, not just any member of the team. Mm. Then when you get to those that are doing it right and you have members of the team, ask as well that who are their consultants. Mm. We'll give you a name amongst them. We'll give you a names amongst others. And mm. we, are all, we all have discerning spirits. I'm mm. sure by the time you talk to you have a conversation with someone, we are not daft people, but you have mm. the time you have a conversation with such persons, mm. and uh, you get um you get one or two vibes from him. You will know mm. the person that just wants to take your money rather than the person that is talking solutions with you. Mm. Anybody mm. that is telling you uh what do you want to, that is starting this conversation with uh uh what do you want to buy or you need to buy this you need to buy that that is not your consultant that is not the right consultant hmm. because the right consultant will first try to understand your situation what True. is your set of life currently what do you True. do currently how do you do it currently what do you use currently hmm. that will be all these questions take all those notes and tell you okay let's see again hmm. so we must be we must be careful to identify the right people to talk to and yes. not those who to take our money. And again, I can also um, say that the organizers and the um, the administrators of this group also have a list of consultants that they know that I know they know that can get things right. So right. there are people that you can talk to. They can also advise you on who to talk to on certain solutions. Thank it's you. Not so one, it's not one person that would be a solution provider to every problem. True, true. And that is what is called teamwork. I work in an mm. organization that that we provide all the solutions. Mm. But when people call me and say, "Okay, we have a problem, we have a need, we want to do screen and this and that, that," I know who I know who I call. I mm. I don't want to make this look like a marketing, like a marketing but, platform. So I'm not going mm. to mention his name. But I'm yeah. sure if somebody, if I mention his name, all of you will, will agree with me. We I are all. I agree with you, sir. We all agree yeah. with you. So if, if you're telling me you want to get, you want to train your guys on cameras, I know who I call. So all mm. of these things are quite important for us to know that mm. when you see a person that is telling you eh, a screen, I'll give you the solution for screen, we'll give you for online streaming, you can mm. have a knowledge of everything. You understand? Yeah. But if you want to grab everything to your chest, that, that person is a merchant. Be careful. Yes. Sorry, sir. I think somebody just joined us. Our guy at the top has joined us, sir. I think Doc has joined this meeting. You're welcome, sir. 
This uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and good evening, good evening, Doc. Good to hear from you, sir. Oh, uh, good good I was happy to have you here. It's an honor to have you, sir. Thank you so yeah. much for what you do for the body of Christ and the entire industry at large. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay. You're, Mr. you're, well, you're welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us, sir. So, uh, Bishop, to the question you asked. Yes, sir. The answer to the question just joined us. <laughs> you, are very, <laughs> you are very, very correct, sir. Okay, so going going forward, um, yes. so you need to identify how that is done and make sure that you don't just speak to just anybody. Get the right, right. people, speak with them, like I said, and then you can be able to get your solutions and then compare notes. It's also important that you you compare notes. Right. So that um so when I when I say compare notes, it's not that I'm not talking about window shopping or multi shopping around. No. Compare notes. Make sure mm -hmm. that you are you have been given a solution. Talk to someone else and say, okay, I have a need. I've been given this solution. What do you think? Right. That's so you can analyze both sides and you have a way forward. That's where you you foolproof whatever solution um, they are given to you. They're giving to you, correct? Okay, something just came to my mind, sir. Our next um, meeting that we're going to be having, we would like you to speak about NDI. Like you said, it's the future, it's the present, and it's also the future. So a lot of our men and women in the media industry, especially church media, need to understand it. So I'm already booking you, sir, in advance for that one. Thank you for accepting. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> All right, let's let's, let's go on. Um, so navigating the upgrade process, when mm -hmm. and and how to upgrade. So number one thing you need to do as well is to be in tune with your manufacturers manufacturers of your equipment. So mm -hmm. some people buy. I've seen situation whereby people buy equipment, and straight from the store they bought it is straight to the studio, open it mm -hmm. up, fire it up, and they are going live with it. Not in the least opening up the manual to use, hmm. or even going on YouTube to see how is this thing done, hmm. right? So people have gotten equipment and they'll call you. That that it is not working. It's a very common thing. So why is it not working? What did you do? At the end of the day, you will find out that it's plugging and input where that where our output should be plugged. Hmm. And why is he doing that? Because he has used one mixer before, and that mixer, the input comes before the output. And he assumes hmm. everything must be the same way. No. Be in tune with the manufacturers of your equipment. They, will, they are always, at every point in time, rolling out updates, doing webinars to teach on how the equipment are used, announcing new products. And For instance, Black Magic, for instance, when they are going to have a new product, they will do an announcement of the product where they will talk about it, show you how it works, so first hand, before you even get it, you know how to use it and all of that. Hmm. Then secondly, you need to always, you need to also always attend webinars, seminars, and broadcast shows when they call for it. For instance, where hmm. at our place, I'm sure you know about that. From time to time, we do webinars and seminars. Um, just recently, uh, a broadcast show was just done in 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 Lagos, the, the Africas. That so yes. many uh, manufacturers there attend such shows to allow you understand the the evolution of the industry. You see new equipment, their hands touch you, touch them, you use them, you you are able to see how they work, how they are used, and all of that. And that way, it also helps to fashion your thoughts pattern in making decisions. And then. Make sure that always you do an update to your equipment whenever the updates are available. I know people that have been using equipment that in the last three, four years, they've never updated it. Mm. I have a TriCaster that the last time it was updated was 2018. And the updates, tons of updates that's come out. So if you don't do things like that, you will certainly run into a problem. Hmm. It is not hmm. every time that your equipment breaks down because it is old. 
There are times that there are, some of these updates include bug, bug fixes. When they see there is a bug coming up, these updates will include bug fixes. If you do not do those updates and those bugs are not fixed, it will later create a problem. And before you know it, at times it could crash the equipment and then you have to start looking for money to buy another one. So updates are always very important. Then always get training from certified persons on the equipment you use and seek for help when you run into them. So to get, you must always get trainings from, from those that are certified to train you on those equipment. And of course, mm. when you buy, you must, when I, I must also tell, I don't know if I mentioned in, 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 in any of the earlier slides that when you buy, you should not also shop around in buying. To buy an equipment, you must buy from the right source. I'm going to talk about it when you get your warranties anyway. So let me leave that for mm. now. But um, okay. um, that you must always get training from certified persons. That helps you. Because when you're trained on your equipment, it's not because when you bought it in 2018, you had training. And that's all of, all that is about it. By the time it's 2019, there are updates and updates that happen to that same equipment. You don't need to buy a new equipment. But all you need to do is to get the training, the requisite training, for that particular equipment that enhances you to make you perform better with it. That way you maximize everything you use. Most times that people go about buying new equipment, they, at times it's just an upgrade that they need, but they don't understand it. So you must be able to make sure that you do the up, up, updates and get trainings all the time. Aging of equipment does not mean that you have to change it. Like I just mentioned, it is not all the time that the, the problem is to change the box. It might be hmm. that to upgrade and change your thinking, thinking factor, your thinking channel. Then one of that one more thing is that you must understand and love your equipment. So when I say you understand and love your equipment, it's it's what I mean is that you must take care of it. If right. You, if you love some, if you love something or someone, you're not going to handle it without caution. Hmm. Right. You don't, right. you don't you don't use your camera and then just leave it open like that till the next Sunday. Mm. There should be periodic, there should be ways that you must treat this equipment so that it can last long for you. Right. So <laughs> this, 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 I want to check that what's up. Uh, uh, so <laughs> So in this in this regards, updates will be, will, will, will be there. and when you have when you when you have trainings and you you have a good you know, the right consultants when you run into issues you could be advised when if it requires you to have a change you'll be advised and if it requires you to just do it do one or two things and you can move on with the same equipment you'll be advised about it. So um, that's that. Now we're going into warranties, long-term sustainability, and and uh, warranties and long-term sustainability. So what I want to say first before we go into this topic is that you must also be careful with your buying pattern. When you want to buy your equipment, a lot of people, a lot of Nigerians, for you to be to be honest all the time rush around to be the likes of Dubai sites or BNH or Amazon to buy mm -hmm. the equipment. You go to them, you talk to them about something, and then the next minute you're up in the air, maybe because a pastor just bought it on his way back. Pastor just did it on his way back. Mm -hmm. This that's, that's is, very common. This is a very, very terrible thing. Well, if you are doing that, let me tell you what you're doing. You are shortchanging yourself and you're shortchanging our, envi our, our environment. Because the truth about it is that all of these manufacturers, they have um they have a registry of where their products are going to. So if you go to the US to buy an equipment, it is registered in the US. Hmm. The equipment is in Nigeria. Hmm. You go to Amazon US or Amazon UK to buy an equipment. It is registered that that thing was sold in the UK, but product mm. is in Nigeria. When they do a sensor of their equipment, right, mm. you find out that they would itemize that, okay, 100 pieces of this equipment are in the US. We just have seven in Nigeria. We want mm. to do customer training. 
where would they take that training to? Absolutely, where they feel they have more patronage. And the hmm. paradox is that this is actually here in Lagos, Nigeria, but it is not registered to us. So hmm. the idea of jumping on the air to buy from any other source is absolutely not right. And all these equipment have certified distributors, um, elite partners, and resellers. Hmm. Let's always try to buy right. Because that's the only way whatever you buy is protected. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll paint a scenario now. And it's something that a lot of people do not know. You could have one particular equipment that bears the same name in the US and in Lagos. And this equipment is produced by the same manufacturer. The earlier TriCasters, for instance. If you buy a TriCaster in the US, then what you're buying is an NCSE unit that would never work in Nigeria, that would never work in the UK. Hmm. Only what you buy from EMEA region that has a multi-standard, because it, that has a multi-standard that will have the NCSE, the PAL, and the PECAM. Hmm. Also, this pro some of these products are regionalized in their production. So the climatic condition in the U.S. is different from what you have in Lagos. And these manufacturers at times put that into play when they are making these products. Hmm. U.S., their power rating is different. So the ICs and all of that that will be put into that unit will have a power rating that will work with their region. While the one that will come to our region, there are extra effort because of the high power rating that we have. So hmm. the the individual components in there, though the same, have different power ratings, but we do not know this. It is not wow. to, the, to the to the to the natural air eye, and such <laughs> things are mistakes that people make with running to buy abroad. Again, when mm. you have issues of warranties with your equipment, right? Mm. How do you resolve it? Right. So, so let me not get ahead of myself. Let me just go on with the slides. Okay, sir. Okay, so, sir. Let's start by saying what is warranty. Mm -hmm. In the short, what they say, a written guarantee issued to the purchaser of an equipment, of an article by its manufacturer or its representative, promising to repair or replace if necessary within a specified period. Mm -hmm. So, a warranty is not something that is going to last you for life. People do not understand this. Mm. It's issued by the manufacturer or the representative. So if you want to buy an equipment and you go to BH, for instance, and buy it from BH, yes, you're going to have a warranty from BH. But if you have a challenge, you have to take that equipment from Nigeria back to the US before you can be sorted out. The cheapest hmm. example I'll give you are Black Magic products. People have right. bought Black Magic products. They've got issues and they've dumped them on the side. And then before you start new, they start saying that Black Magic does not do support. Black Magic does one of the most fantastic supports you can ever think of. Mm. But their support is regionalized. If you buy from the US, you have to ship that product yourself back to the US yourself. Mm. But if you buy from Nigeria and you're within warranty and you did not void your warranty and there's a challenge, there's a manufacturer fault, you will not have to spend a dime. You know. They will send mm. you a DHL ticket or a or a UPS ticket or something to take up the equipment back to their side, fix it, and most of the time they'll send you a brand new one. Mm. People have this call that can attest to that. Yes, yes, yes. So it's always very important that we buy rights if you want to have warranty cover. Your warranty cover is only dependent on your channel of buying things. And it's easy to find out. We have the, we have those that knows about it around. And if you go to where to buy on any manufacturer site, they show you where to buy. And then you'll see the contacts there for you to work with. So I'm going to talk of certain benefits of warranties. So hmm. some people are like, okay, they do not mind. Shabi is just this one. If I use it, uh, it doesn't matter. Nobody does what. 
Number one thing is, by the time you want to buy an equipment, permit me to say this. There are certain places that you want to buy equipment that will tell you, we can only give you three, a three weeks warranty. We can only give you two weeks warranty. Be wary, mm. of, such, be wary of such equipment. Some will even tell you that warranty no day. Now, as you see, I'm inquiring. So that means, for one, there is no security in that sales. That mm. person just throw you boxes. Yeah. And it is wrong. The right thing to do is to buy a relationship. That's what we do where we are. We do not just buy equipment. You not just buy equipment. One, you will not just buy from us except you are buying right. And when we buy, there is warranty. Warranty allows you, it gives you confidence that the product you are buying is right. Mm. It also allows you so also, if you buy from the right source, they will not just give you and tell you you have one month warranty or six months warranty. We will sit you down and tell you that there are warranties on these products, but your warranty cover is this, this, and this. Hmm. Hmm. So you have that that you, you you already know by the time you're purchasing your equipment that you have a warranty that covers you from certain number of time to certain number of time. Right. We have manufacturers that would also do extended warranties for you. When warranty expires and equipment is still looking well, you can pay to buy further warranties. Just hmm. for protection. But all of these things is not open to everybody. Because hmm. what people just do is go out there, purchase boxes, and move away with it. And that's what launches everybody, such people into a lot of problems. So limitations and abuse of warranties. There are certain things that warranties does not cover. So people will say that, okay, maybe I have warranty, and then they'll go and blow up the equipment with power, with power surge, and then they say, I have warranty. It doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Warranty does not cover any man-made error, and it does not cover power surge. And the beauty of it is that no matter how smart you try to be, by the time this unit gets to the manufacturers, they will tell you exactly what it is. I know of I know of someone that bought an equipment that claimed that he has never used it. And he just bought it out of the box and this is what happened. Okay, no problem. And we did and, and did an RMA and sent it to the manufacturers. When they get to them, they printed out a data sheet telling when it was first used, how many hours it was used for, and what the, the damage, what caused the damage on the equipment. Wow. Technology has gone way, way high. All of these things are determined. They, they, they can determine all of these things. Hmm. So you must understand that if you blow up your equipment with a power surge, you avoided your warranty. If there is a hardware damage to your equipment, you avoided your warranty. If you have, if you as much as Unscrew one screw from your equipment. You avoided your warranty, and guess what? They will know. In 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 trainings that we have gone through, we've been taught all of these things. There are ways that you will know when an equipment has been opened and locked back. And you, you will know. So, if you don't want your warranty void, don't unscrew or open up the equipment yourself. Ensure that your power system is very, very, your power system is very, very grounded. Make sure that you guide against surges and um, over power, power, power ratings that will, that will come in and blow your equipment up. Use UPS, U, um, um, inverters if possible. And uh -huh. make sure that those that are handling the equipment understand the use of these equipment. Wow. You, have an H you have an HDMI device and you hmm. want to power it and you want to plug onto it. And the first thing you do is you have you have powered the equipment first and you have powered on your camera first before plugging in the HDMI cable. You are cleaning that equipment. Oh. Hmm. You, are, you are cleaning it deep in little by little. Hmm. In such cases, the ideal thing to be done is make sure you plug in all your cables. I can't hear you. First, 
when your cables are completely hello? Uh... who is that hello okay please go on sir okay yeah. so ensure uh... that ensure that your connections are completely done first before powering yes. up equipment both the camera and the mixer hmm. and ensure that you are using very good cables if your cables are touchy or bad mere cable uh, <laughs> when your cables are touchy that could also send redundant power back to your equipment <laughs> and, get it, and get it burnt right hmm. yes so all of these things are important <laughs> No, so that um, uh, it helps you to avoid um, um, void to to avoid you voiding okay. okay. on your equipment. Hmm. So I think right now we already understand what the benefits of the warranties are, the limitations and abuse of our warranties. I'm sure I've covered mm -hmm. the warranty cover and things that will make us void our warranties. I'll go to hmm. the next slide so quickly. Okay, I have a comment that I wanted to bring to your attention, sir. Yes, it's sir. From Mr. Didamola. I said black box technology on media equipment now. Shut the fuck up. Sorry? Did you hear me, sir? He yeah, said black yeah. box technology I'm on... Com. <laughs> we need to remove somebody. Admin... Remove that person from this um meeting. Thank you. Yes, Hello, that, yes, yes. I know why he's saying that. Um, oh. what's in what the, the that comment he, he said is hmm. referring to the time that I mentioned that if that the manufacturers of the equipment can actually determine oh. the history of that equipment when it gets back to them. You know that in a plane, there's something called a black box in a plane. When a plane crashes, what the tech, what the engineers look for is not yes. That's what you allow them to understand shut what up. the problem is. Shut fuck up. In the in the good shot. That's what allows them to understand what the problem is on the plane. If you understand what I'm saying, so that black book technology is not just um. You gotta be to or... anymore. It's also in. in Broadcast equipment now. That's what uh, Mr. Dilabalamola is trying to say. I have so, a question. So, um, oh. maintenance and long term planning. So, um, in maintaining our equipment, there are certain points we need to just put into place. I've mentioned a bit of it in the in the, in the course of my of my presentation, but. We just look at the following um the following uh, keys so that we can look work oh, on excuse them. me so preventive me. maintenance uh, preventive maintenance strategies excuse that's me. part of the things i just i mentioned excuse earlier me. that's part of the things i mentioned earlier excuse me that we should that we should prevent that we could prevent strategy that preventive maintenance strategy making sure that we do um things the right way like i just mentioned on uh, how we power up our equipment, how we use them, making sure that the equipment are well taken care of, um, recurring maintenance. Maintenance is not until we come at the end of one month and say we want to maintain. On daily basis, you want to use your camera, for instance, you're bringing it out, you clean it. At the end of the day, after your production, clean that equipment, move it away from dust. Don't store it in humid areas, you know? All of these things are very important. They help elongate the life of, 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 of this equipment. Ensuring the right operational process. Making sure that, um, for instance, when you are setting up your studio, ensure that the, the power solution is devoid of any form of um any form of any 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 form of um uh, is devoid of any 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 form of uh, alteration. Make sure that you don't take the power from your equipment on the same source you're taking other powers. Maybe from your ACs or your or from your your fridge or any other equipment. Make sure the power the power source for equipment are, are isolated 
and their claim. So uh, working to the books and adhering to manufacturing recommendations, manufacturers of, of equipment always recommend what they design, what they want us to do, how they want the equipment used and all of that. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you. And here, and here to those, to that, to such instructions and whatever you, you are supposed to do, make sure that you follow up on things, on things like that. Um, mm. Ensuring the power system is clean. I mentioned that already. Keep the power mm. traffic away from signals. Ensure that already. Ensure yeah. that uh, you have reliable and quality, well terminated cables. This is very important. Make sure that your cables are well terminated. Cables that are not well terminated are a maniac. It's a it's a it's a gunpowder. The problem about to happen. So ensure you are using the right cables and make sure they are well terminated. Periodic and recurrent training continuously helps us in making the best out of all of this. So with all of this, putting all of this and a lot more into consideration, we can always elongate the life and life lifespan of our equipment. We can be sure that we will buy right. We will not buy the equipment that we do not need. We will not buy from the wrong source. And at the end of the day, you can be sure that you will have a far-reaching, more, more with better delivery media department. Um, this point, I would want to rest and say thank you for listening to me tonight. I'm, I know I could not touch every bit of it. Our time is fast spent, and um, we, I believe, we have been able to. I probably have been able to communicate, and if, if you have questions, please, I'll be willing to answer. Okay. Thank okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Even though I think we we have just a few more moments left to the end of this whole meeting. Somebody said, Mr. Dabola said, this is advanced media class. I wish we had one more hour to go. I know there's a, there's a lot we need to ask. If you have your questions, please drop them now. Um, 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 our media expert is going to take one or two. The others we will take in the community um, in the course of the week. Um, he's a very, very busy man. Before we could get him, we know what we went through. But he committed to it and he has honored um, the whole industry, the body of Christ to be here tonight. So let's drop our um, questions. We would answer one or two tonight. The others in the WhatsApp community. All right, I'm waiting, but I already have a question. Okay, um, Mr. Biola, I was going to ask you about purchasing this equipment. Um, we have purchased the right equipment, but one of the major challenges we face is power. And I want to crave your indulgence. Do you know anyone we can bring on the forum that would discuss extensively about how we should uh, manage our power? One of our guys on the in the community told me about what happened in their church, I think about two or three weeks ago. It was a disaster. The money was lost and it was because of power. So um, do you have anyone you can point us to that we can bring on the platform. But you've already given us the um, basics, everything, um, separating your equipment, your uh, media equipment from the general use equipment, like your air conditioning and all of that. But I, I want you to dwell on that for just a brief moment. That's a major, major problem that we're trying to solve for the industry right now. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, so um, that's that's that is true. And one thing I understand, one major problem that a lot of people do and they don't understand is the fact that when you, whilst you're running your cable, apart from the fact that you separate your equipment, um, your power, your power solution from, um, you isolate the power that comes to your to your equipment. You must yes. also ensure that as you run your signal cables along, you must run them the void of altercations with any power source. Hmm. You can't be running a light signal parallel in tangents with your video cables. The wow. very first time you do that, you will not have issues. It will be clear and you'll be like, 
that distance is not much. I think it's okay. It's not okay. These damages does not come at once. Wow. They are damages that come little by little before they build up. And many wow. a times when this is when this happens, you will not be able to identify easily that it's an interference at a particular point. Because when you did the installation, it was working well. So you would assume that is not a problem. But it is. Hmm. It's just a problem that starts gradually. Wow. wow. So another thing again is the, what I said about um, uh, something as simple as plugging your equipment and unplugging it, you know? Something as simple as... Yes. As um, how you power, so you 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 will be shocked that I've seen churches whereby because they want to they want to uh, they want to save money. Hmm. Roving camera is roving with an SDI cable, and they also rove with power. Hey, so somebody is carrying SDI cable and rolling for the cameraman. Somebody is rolling power. It doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. See, for all of these equipment, like I said, for, for instance, for an HDMI cable, mm. you put an HDMI cable, if you plug it into an HDMI device, while that device is on, or you pull it out, each time you do that, there is a minute deposit of power on that port. And what does mm. that mean? That port is, is waving to life at that point. And it's wow. a very negligible spark that you did not think that it's anything. But before you mm. know it, it begins to accumulate and becomes a problem and burns out that pot. That pot wow. might still be working and other pots, that pot might, be, might not work again. Other pots might still be working. But mm. most of the equipment we have now are single bodied equipment. So what does that mean? That damage on that port with time will still spread to all the other ports. Hmm. And that is completely avoidable if you have done operations the right way. So in terms of equipment handling, you can avoid power problems. And at the hmm. same time, in terms of how we set up our studios and as our, our, um, our setup, it's good to always make sure that you get a power expert to come mm. in at the time of setup. Fantastic. So Fantastic. in terms of getting somebody to talk to us about power solutions, yes, we have someone that can talk to us and um, um, I would relate with you later on that. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. So let's look forward, everyone. Let's look forward to, we already identified two of um, the things we're going to be discussing, NDI technology, then we're going to be discussing power. I know power affects, it affects big churches and it affects small churches also. There's a lot of complaints about bond converters, uh, bond ports on switchers and all of that. Um, okay, we are going to wrap up now. I saw one very important question that I wanted to... Okay, Miss, uh, Mr. Didamola said something. Example is comparison of data video and black magic converters. Their life time differs sometimes yes it does yes um can we refer that the cost of equipment sometimes determines the equipment reliability that's where it started from yes and can we also refer that it will also determine the warranty yes fantastic submission sir thank you so much but somebody asked a question how do we maintain led screens because i know we have LED screens. I can't remember. How do we how do we maintain our LED screens? Yeah, I can't remember how. So, sorry, do you want to speak about LED screens and how we can maintain them and keep them um in top shape? Okay. Um I practice what I say, right? Um okay, sorry. I I don't preach one thing and say do what I say, don't do what I say and don't do what I do. It's don't not, do what I do, but do what uh, So it's not as if I don't have an idea of how to maintain LED screens. I yeah. will go on and on and on. But right in here, we have... Um, our we have, LED experts. We have our yeah. LED experts. So, so you're pushing me to that place now. I, I was trying to avoid it, but... Anyway, <laughs> um, okay. if if um, Mr. Adidamura can please unmute and 
help us take that question, please. Okay. Uh, Mr. David Amola, are you able to unmute where you are? Ah, Let's good, go evening. good evening, everyone. Good, you can hear good, me. Uh, good evening, sir. You're not on the bill, but somehow God has brought you in. <laughs> uh, okay. I think uh, just like any other equipment uh, that uh, Mr. Biola has spoken in terms of power, uh, mm. there's need for, because LED is a, is a light emitting device, is a light emitting diode. You know, mm. the moment your light is not steady, it's not, it's fluctuating. I always tell people, if you are using LED, make sure it's not necessary that you should have a uh, UPS because the cost of mm. powering LED with UPS might be much. But yes. can you ensure that at the beginning of your service, if you are running on gen, because I know most churches we run on gen or we run on uh, steady power. So make sure yes. that before, sometimes when you are doing your sound check, you may not use gen, they probably you are using NEPA. Before you mm. put on your LED, ensure your, you are already on the steady power that the church is going to, I mean, the service is going to run. So if they are going to change to gen, maybe you are using a small gen for your sound check or for your preparation, don't put on your LED by that time. Make sure you are yeah. on power that is going to run from the beginning of the service to the end of the service. And put on your screen when you know there will not be any interruption. Because mm. if you are having lights out, light on, light out, light on, you are reducing the lifespan of the LED. It may not break down at once, but if the LED is going to serve you for five years or 10 years, you have reduced it by some percentage. So I will always ensure that, make sure you have your steady power and it translates to any equipment you are using. Your converters will always go bad when there is a constant interruption of power. That is mm. one way, electronically. The other, uh, man, uh, other side of maintaining your LED is once in a while, make sure you have a, a, a blower. It, it won't be a hard blower, maybe a soft blower that will just blow the dust. Because over the time, when you are doing your vacuum cleaning, I mean, you're sweeping dust settle on the LED and yes. it becomes dull. You may mm. not know that it's not the chip that is going down, but dust is already accumulating on it. Maybe once in a while, if you have a soft brush, but you know, if it's a large LED, using brush may be cumbersome, but you can have a blower a blower that is not too hard, that will not blow your chips away. Yeah. So just blow off the surface of the screen. I think you okay. are okay. LED uh, is made, a good LED is made to last for 100,000 hours, hmm. which is equivalent to 11 years if you are running 24 hours a day. Wow. That is a good LED. So, but if you have one, the fake chip in town, after six months, they will start burning out. So mm. that's just a little submission. I don't want to waste take our time. A lot okay. is, can be said on that. Thank you, oh. Mr. Adekunle. Okay, okay. Thank yes, you. If so I can, if I can jump in and add to that. Okay, sir. I, I also scheduled periodic maintenance. Hmm. This is one thing a lot of churches do not do. You feel when you get something, that's all. You've got it, you've got it. Apart from the periodic maintenance that you do, just like he has said, it is equally important that when you have equipment like that, maybe it's a once in a quarter or a once or, or twice in a year, let your consultants or the person that, that um, maybe the people you bought from or whatever, whoever is standing in that gap for you, come around and do an evaluation. It's just like you go to the hospital and you know you are not sick. We are going to do general checkup. So also allow, that is also very important for you to do an overview, an evaluation of your equipment, how the performance procedure is, how the, um, how well it's performing, if there are things I need to do, if there, you know, so that if there are things you have missed along the line, such professional will be able to enlighten you and tell you to go in that line. It's also important that we put that in place. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Is it possible for me to just borrow just one or two minutes um, um, just to say something that's quite important? Um, go ahead, sir. 
Go ahead, sir. I'm so I'm so ever proud of you guys. I'm so so happy of of the great work and that you've done tonight, especially um, um the the host uh, Viola as well, the person that took this um, webinar. So what I just wanted to say is that um, Viola said so many things here tonight, and uh, there's a lot of um, unseen wars that we seems to fight on behalf of of Africa and especially Nigeria. Uh, there's some there's some there's some equipment that we've um, we've argued over the years for you for you guys in Nigeria to have two years warranty on. Uh, I did send a message to Biola privately. That's why I decided to just jump in and quickly say it. it's not ready. Um, Black Magic, for example, we give you two years warranty if you buy from the right channel, from Biola and from some other dealers that are and are certified by Black Magic. If you buy from the US on BNH or UK or something like that, you're only going to get one year. Um, Data video will give you three years warranty if you buy from the right channel. So um, there are voices on behalf of Nigeria. We, we are aware of all this. Um, we are aware of all the products that are coming to Nigeria. They call them gray imports. And the, this, 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 um, these products that land on our, on our doorsteps in Nigeria, you know, on the surface, you know, you save money. But there's something that uh, Viola will attest, I always say, I always tell people, you always pay. Either you pay now or you pay later. But what you do is you always pay. If you think that you can save money now and bypass the processes, um, you know, you're still, you're still gonna come around about the way and bite you on the, on the, on the, on the heels. So it's very important. And I wish next time we're doing this, we can even invite some, some of the people from Black Magic to join in. I mean, all the conversations, Biola, like we are test to it, and the other people on this, on this platform that come to these shows, all we talk about day in, day out is this issue we're discussing tonight. How people do not buy things from the wrong channel. Mm. They keep wow. buying things from the wrong channel. And, and that is affecting the overall um, 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 performance of those equipment. So please uh, buy from the right channel and please listen to all those things that Viola has, has, has said to us tonight. Uh, they're important. And at the end of the day, we need to be good stewards of God's, of God's, of God's money. You know what I mean? This, sure. this, uh, this is God's money, it's not our money. So we need to look after it. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so, so much. We we are so honored to have you here tonight. I I didn't think it will be this soon that we'll have you on the platform, but God in his infinite mercy has brought you in. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you, Mr. Biola. I want everyone that has um, learned something tonight, just drop a thank you for Mr. Biola. Let's drop a thank you uh, as we wrap up tonight. Um, I've seen some questions and I've dropped the link to the uh, community. Uh, I'm going to drop it again. If you're not a part of the community, you can join tonight and uh, we'll, we'll take the questions there. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Mr. John, <laughs> Mr. John, Mr. John, we're still going to have you again, Mr. John, by God's grace. Uh, we have a lot to talk about, and this industry has a lot to learn from you. Okay, so thank you, every single person, and to our special guest, uh, the one that makes the super guest special, our dear mama. She joined us tonight and led the opening prayer. I know how much um, that yeah. means to her and how much that means to us also. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you for every single industry or guy and uh, um, major professionals and real-time specialists. Thank you for everyone that joined. Thank you for every single church that joined. I saw some churches from Thank outside. You. Yeah. Thank you, Ma. Good to have you. I saw some churches from outside of Nigeria. That's fantastic. We have churches from Togo. I think we have some from Benin Republic. And uh, we have some from Canada some from the US and the UK. I've seen someone from, um, is it Bahrain? We are, we're spread across the world right now. 
and we keep inviting more people in. We had about 1,500 people. We're looking at getting to 5,000 professionals from about 1,000 churches. That's our goal. And we know we're going to hit the target. Okay, so thank you, everyone, once again. We're going to close with a prayer. I'm looking at who is best to lead this prayer. But the best person is going to be uh, Doc. Doc, if you're still with us, can you just please lead us in a short prayer to just wrap up what we have learned today as we prepare for the next ed episode? Doc, thank sir. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Let's pray. Yes, Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, because distance is nothing to you, Father God. You're out of time. You're not in time. You're not bound by time or space. Thank you because you're everywhere at the same time. Thank you for everyone on this platform. Thank you for my wonderful brothers in Nigeria. I'm here in the UK. And thank you for all, all over the world, people that have joined us from different parts. Father, we thank you for the kingdom. Thank you because, Lord, you continue to teach our hands to war and our fingers to fight for you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for all that you have committed into our hands. Help us to be wise servants. Help us to be excellent stewards. Help us to be, oh God, um, um, excellent the way you are, excellent in everything that you do, Father. So, Man. Lord, we thank you for all that we have learned tonight. Help us to apply them. Help us to deplore them. Help us to develop them. Help us to, oh God, put them into action, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank Amen. you for many, many years. Uh, webinars and seminars and the knowledge, Father God, that you keep impacting on us. Let us spread, oh God, this knowledge to people that do not know them not. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. And everyone says, Amen. 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 Thank, you. Amen. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, thank you so, so much. much. God bless thank you. you. Good, Good to have you, sir. You. All righty. Thank you so much, sir, Mr. Biola. God bless yes, you, real good. Great honor. Thank you, Mr. Didawala. Thank you for Mr. Drag Baby. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Sir.